All right, so this week we explore uh, pull factors and the formation of Cambodian American communities, uh, specifically the one in Long Beach, California. So uh, the article by Dory Chen and Jay Steno uh, discusses the pull factor, the push-pull factor. Push meaning uh, the factors that will push you uh, to migrate, uh, to leave your country. And of course, for Cambodian refugees during this period, it was the Khmer Rouge genocide, as well as the war in Vietnam that spilled over into Cambodia. And the pull factor then would be um, the U.S. accepting refugees from Cambodia, uh, safety uh, in a safe environment, um, resources, education for kids, the possibility of finding work. Those are pull factors. All right. Now, uh, the other two articles, uh, one by Su Chen Chan about Long Beach uh, becoming the Cambodian capital, and Susan Needham and Karen Quintilani uh, about Cambodian secondary migration. Uh, I'll deal with secondary migration first. Now, uh, when Cambodian refugees were able to come to the United States, uh, that is their primary or first migration. They came from Cambodia uh, through refugee camps and then to the United States. And at that time, uh, the United States government had a policy that uh, instead of lumping all the Cambodians together, they would put them into all 50 states so that no one city or no one town or no one state would have the economic burden of resettling all the Cambodian refugees. This happened to Vietnamese refugees and Laotian refugees, uh, refugees from Laos as well. And uh, and that was a actually bad policy because we have research now that shows that it is better to put them together uh, and focus your resources uh, uh, um, in one area <clears throat> so that uh, and better to put them together and focus your resources is because the refugees can rely on each other uh, uh, as they adjust and adapt. Because um, when you put a Cambodian family in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming, or Idaho, and they're like one or two Cambodian family and everyone else is non-Cambodian and there's nothing and the weather is extremely different, uh, extremely cold. They come from tropical, humid and hot. It can be psychologically and emotionally uh, very traumatizing. Uh, so now we know that if we ever have to resettle refugee, it's better to uh, resettle them together. And so secondary migration happens when a Cambodian who, a Cambodian American refugee family who were placed in say Wyoming or Idaho, right, or even Alaska, uh, decide that they're not going to stay. And they heard that in Southern California in a town called Long Beach, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, it's actually pretty warm. Uh, it's a little bit humid in the summer. Uh, you can grow uh, Cambodian herbs and spices and even vegetables. My father has a papaya tree grown in our backyard in LA. Um, and so, and that kind of, uh, that kind of um, uh, information went through the grapevine and Cambodian uh, families in the middle of nowhere or in colder areas started to migrate to Long Beach, uh, uh, called secondary migration. But when they do that, they do risk losing some of their uh, guaranteed funding for their family in terms of relocation uh, funds. And, and, uh, and uh, both Susan and Karen and Su Chen talks about why Cambodia. Now, Su Chen talks about the history of Long Beach even before uh, the refugee flow. And Long Beach had uh, California State University at Long Beach, Long Beach State University had Cambodian international students. And when the Khmer Rouge came into power, they were able to stay. And then later on, and they settled around Long Beach. And then later on with the refugee flow, uh, those Cambodian Americans helped uh, with resettlement. And so, um, and so that's why Long Beach early on uh, had uh, some capital or 
or some um, appeal for Cambodians to resettle. Now, secondary migration went to uh, went to Long Beach as well, because you know you hear that other people are there, and so you go there, and you realize here I can have Cambodian food, I can grow Cambodian vegetables, uh, I can speak Khmer, uh, and eventually over time, uh, businesses uh, sprouted out. And uh, now it is uh, called Cambodia Town and has uh, officially been labeled Cambodia Town. Uh, and it's a few blocks of Cambodian owned businesses uh, in Long Beach. Um, <clears throat> so, so as you read for this week and as you watch the video, um, uh, think about the formation of other ethnic communities, ethnic enclaves, and see if they have similar historical processes. For example, if you're Vietnamese American and you know about the formation of Little Saigon, or if you're Chinese American and you know about Chinatown or Japanese American for Japantown or Korean for J-Town, I mean K-Town, and um, Little India, or uh, uh, other um, ethnic enclaves as well.